Hello and welcome back to Scale Modeling Cafe and welcome to part three of the Clearprop H75N Hawk. Now in this episode I'm going to do the construction and as you can see everything started off with a little bit of drilling. That will be for the aerial holes. Some of the pin and holes were a little bit tight actually so I just uh, opened those up with a little bit of a larger drill and that really helped actually. Now for the glue, I have been using super glue as my glue of choice but I decided to go old school and use cement. A uh, mix of the two, so that was just the Tamiya thick cement on the sort of flat portions. That was just pushed in place and then I'll be using the ammo extra thin glue for the sort of main fuselage seams if you like and that was just touched in and run along and you see what I'm going to do here is apply apply the glue let it soften the plastic and then squeeze and squeeze quite hard what that'll do is that'll cause the molten plastic to ooze out so here you go applying the pressure now and you'll get a bead of glue that'll come out and harden off and I leave this for minimum of three or four days before attempting to sand it. It may seem dry but uh, and you can see the bead there. It may seem dry but it won't be and you will get uh, go seams. So leave it a long time. If you can leave it a week, two weeks, um, even better. The longer you can leave it the lesser risk you have all those dreaded ghost scenes. So not much gluing area actually on this, it's kind of modular, the fuselage, which is, uh, I think is a good thing. <laughs> Personally on this one, everything fits pretty much uh, pretty good as you will see. And uh, yeah, the fewer seams, the better, frankly. Oops, uh, just dropped that there. Uh, the top decking, as you can see, it's been painted green. You don't have to, you won't see it. And it fits really well, but you can see there's gonna be an awful lot of flex there in the fuselage. So I just glued one half and then I left it quite a long time uh, to let the glue go off properly before pulling it across, lining everything up on the other side applying the glue and taping it down and that way you'll uh, you'll minimize any uh, sort of fit issues and things like that and any dodgy seams that you're going to have to uh, fill sand contours blah so really taking the time to make sure all the contours are going to line up pushing it around, manipulating it. All this work now, it may seem a faff, but it will save you an awful lot of time later on when you have to maybe even fill, sand, scribe, when you could have just lined it up and uh, minimized all that in the first place. So there you can see the tape on the other side and uh, I thought I'd just break out the the color glue for the inside, why not? No particular reason, just it was to hand. Now, this is a week later and I'm polishing the seam. So using one of the Flory sanding sponges, it's quite a fine grit. Uh, to be honest, I've no idea what it is. Probably 400, something like that. And then this is just, uh, I got this really cheap off eBay actually, it's um, from, I think it's 3M, it's, it's seconds, it's rejects, but uh, it works a treat. And then even there, a little bit of Trizact just to polish off the, uh, the final scratches. And by doing it in the opposite direction at 90 degrees from the, uh, from the harsher grit, you... Uh, do a better job of sanding out those uh, sanding out those scratches. A harder sanding stick now. Uh, this is so I can match the contours. 
I was, uh, as you saw before, I was very careful in trying to line it up, but, you know, nothing's perfect in this world. And uh, I've got a slight step, but that's really easily resolved by just uh, sanding everything flush. And the advantage of that sanding pad stuff is uh, it will conform, so you're not going to end up with a flat spot or anything. Obviously, with all seams, you are going to eliminate the detail, and this is my favourite RB Productions tool. It's a panel line saw, and uh, it's really clever because the teeth have a guide on them, which means you can't go too deep. It'll only let you saw to the depth of a panel line. It's absolutely brilliant. So I normally go over with that first because I do find it easier to line everything up. Then I'll go in with a scriber and uh, just clean things up a little bit. That's the trumpeter scriber. It is very sharp and it is finer than the Tamiya scriber, I do find. And then the rivet. So, you, as you probably been able to see this aeroplane is fully riveted this kit and uh, they are really fine so you are going to uh, destroy the rivets around the seams and I matched the spacing with the Galaxy Tools rivet, uh, rivet machine and uh, it's a simple job of uh, just going over and restore them and what you can do if you just very lightly um, move the rivet wheel around you'll actually feel it go into a rivet and then you know you're in exactly the right place they just had a bit of a polish just to smooth everything down an old toothbrush helps to remove any sanding dust and then you can actually use the scriber to go in and remove any stubborn sanding dust And the last step is just to melt anything away that shouldn't be there with a bit of extra thin. Right, there is actually a panel line on the seam on the front. So I uh, used a bit of Dymo tape, broke out the trumpet describer and uh, restored the line. Again, you don't want to do this too early, don't rush. You need to let the glue fully cure. And again, this is a week later. Um, otherwise, it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be quite soft down there and uh, you do run the risk of some uh, damage that's going to be quite difficult actually to eliminate. So make sure it's all proper hardened off. There are some fasteners around the front. They did get obliterated in the sanding and I've got this MDC punch. I've got two sizes. Well, actually I've got more than that, but I only use a, uh, a slightly larger one and a slightly smaller one. And uh, it's an easy job to just go in and uh, just restore any of the lost surface detail with this. I really like this tool. It uh, What it does it, is it leaves a circular impression and it pushes up in the middle like a little dome it's really cool now we can put the cockpit in that just pops in from underneath and I really like this method because you can clean up all the seams get rid of all the sanding residue even give it a wash let it all dry and then stick the cockpit in and it's going to be really quite clean I just hate it when you get dust and bits and pieces on the inside of glass work and canopy work. It's a right pain actually to uh, to try and get it out, but this works really nicely. So a mix of different glues, a bit of super glue to tack things in place, just spreading it around with a cocktail stick and then using uh, some pressure to make sure it's in the right place and then just hitting it with accelerator holding it for a few seconds, let the accelerator do its work 
and then you can release it. And then out with the liquid cement just to weld things in place. And I tend to do this, use various different glues. They all have their advantages and disadvantages and by picking the right glue for the right job you can uh, make things a lot easier for yourself. And that's the advantage of this applicator that you get with the ammo uh, glues. You really can get right in there and it's really very, very precise. Brilliant stuff. And there is a shot of all that lovely detail that we saw in the last episode. All buttoned up. Makes for a really busy cockpit. Just a little bit of glue here along the canopy rails and where the windscreen's gonna go. That will just seal everything in. And then it's an easy job just to touch in any paint with the brush. But that's so precise, the uh, damage to the paint is pretty much negligible actually. Okay, now for the engine firewall. This is resin. It came in the exhaust update set. So uh, you've got to use super glue here, um, but the fit's really good. It's obviously um, CAD designed uh, and uh, it just fits brilliantly. And no doubt they just used exactly the same design uh, from the plastic part. The reason why I use this resin bit is because it does have the cutouts for the full exhaust you don't get the full exhaust in the plastic so uh, this is uh, obviously a better system you get more detail it's all hollowed out and yeah but to be honest you only ever see the tips of the exhausts so if you wanted to just drill out the plastic pieces to be honest that's probably just as good now for the wings, and again, liberal use of different types of glue. This is the sort of resin type glue from Tamir. I do like to use that on the uh, flat uh, pieces. And the leading edge, uh, can't even speak. Uh, the leading edge, that fits really well. And then I just go back and seal everything in with the extra thin glue. Again, there's the squeezage to try and get that little bead of glue to pop out. Now the trailing edge. I did have a little bit of a snag at the trailing edge. It was a little bit thick and I tried scraping and sanding the inner surface, but I ended up with a tiny bit of a gap you can see that I'm manipulating it. I'm trying to uh, get it as um, small as absolutely possible. And it was a bit of a faff, if I'm honest. I tried two approaches. The first approach was to put quite a lot of glue in there and squeeze out a bead of molten plastic and sand that down. But if I'm honest, that didn't quite work. So I had to come up with a different approach, which you will see in just a second. So this is me just trying to pinch it to try and ooze out that glue. But yeah, it was all getting a bit unsatisfactory, actually. So you see, I'm just trying to flood it with the glue, just really trying to melt it and to squeeze it all out. So my solution was to make some stretch sprue and glue that in place, let that properly harden and then go and sand it all flush. I did use a little bit of filler as well. 
If you don't know what stretch sprue is, uh, just you get some of the plastic runner from the kit parts, um, the frame, heated up with a candle or a lighter or something like that. And then when you see it expand and go all shiny, you just pull the two halves apart and uh, you get this stuff, stretch sprue. And it's really versatile actually, you can use it for all sorts of things. Here obviously I'm using it as a filler. But you can use it for wiring, detailing, all sorts of stuff. So just using the back of the tweezers there, just to push it into place. It's a fair amount of glue in there. So I did have a little bit of a channel that it just sat in quite nicely, that little gap. Having left this for a week as well to dry off, I came back and sanded everything flush. So here the leading edge, you might be able to see some Mr. Surfacer there. That's a bit of belt and braces. And again, out with this sponge stuff, which is really great actually. It, uh, it does conform to the contours and uh, you're not gonna get any flat spots. And then just polishing it at 90 degrees means you're not going to get any scratches really or at least you're going to eliminate them and going back with a very well worn sanding sponge I've had this for years and it does a great job of polishing everything up and as the same as the fuselage we can go in and restore the riveting and this makes a, a real difference actually if you just take the time to restore all the leading edge detail it, uh, it looks all consistent and uh, makes a massive difference actually to the finest, finished, I really can't speak today, can I? Uh, the finished, the final model. And down the back end as well, the training edge. Obviously, I'd done a little bit of filling with Mr. Surfacer. I did that sanding, corrected the training edge it's well worth taking the time to do that. It does look much, much better. But obviously the uh, the rivets actually on this model are really fine and it doesn't take a lot to go in and sort of damage them, shutter them off. So uh, they were restored as well. So these pieces, interestingly in a different colored gray plastic, they're the mounting sort of sockets, if you like, for the fixed undercarriage. It would be, I think, relatively easy for Clearprop to mould retractable undercarriage and make a P36, and I really hope they do that in the future. This is always the main event in any model aeroplane kit, is the wing to fuselage mating. And as you will see, the fit is absolutely superb. Kudos to Clearprop, that is just a dry fit and it's just brilliant. And obviously I am going to glue it, um, but it doesn't need much at all. That seam that you can see me putting the glue on there, I did run a little bit of Mr. Surfacer over that, just for, again, just to eliminate it completely. And just to help with the seam, I did use a bit of tape just to provide that little bit of pressure and then ran the glue along and then I left that to dry overnight to properly harden off. Again the advantage of the ammo glue and the applicator. And the wheel spats, this was, uh, these were glued together with black super glue, um, primarily for speed, if I'm honest, no other reason than that. Just touching it in there with some accelerator and that'll be all sanded down immediately, really. Just applying pressure, squeezing it out just to make sure there's gonna be no gaps. 
tailplanes. These come in two parts each, two per side, pretty traditional. After the seam is rubbed down, they can just be plonked into place. The fit's quite good, but I did have a little bit of a gap on the right hand uh, on the right hand side. See how I deal with that in a second. But again, alignment is really important here, so it's really worth taking the time to make sure everything is square. I just do it by eye. Some people use templates, cardboard, plastic card, anything really. I just use a bit of traditional Siemens eye. And I'd rather have a tiny little bit of a gap and it be level than zero gap and it be a little bit wonky. But I use a bit of uh, deluxe plastic putty. It's water based. Put it on, let it dry, rub it off with a wet cotton bud. Elevators. The fit is really tight here. Um, I'm just scratching off a little bit of um, bit of a mold seam, and they just push into place. Same with the ailerons. The engineering on this kit is absolutely superb. It's one of the best kits I've ever built, actually. You can see just a push fit and uh, yeah and that's gonna hold in place nicely wheel spats going on now interestingly um, the wheels where they mount in the wheel spats you can see I've already painted some stuff down there just to uh, just to ease the masking there's only a pin and hole on one side, and I thought it was going to cause me problems, but actually, no, it didn't. It worked fine. Bit odd, but uh, you would have thought there would have been a pin on both sides, but no, it all works. And again, alignment is key. I did have a bit of a gap at the front, though, so again... Uh, Deluxe Perfect Plastic Putty came to the rescue and that was finished off with a bit of Mr. Surfacer as well. The gun pods, these come in two halves. They were glued together with super glue again and uh, don't forget to open up the holes on the lower wing part. Um, I did on one side, uh, but managed to drill it from the other side, uh, luckily. And I just used some clothes pegs just to apply a bit of pressure while the glue dried. Onto the engine. The cylinders are two parts sprayed with um, ammo's a stand steel and I added an ignition wiring harness just from lead wire and you can see that just uh, that oil wash is brilliant stuff just makes the detail pop out and on the crankcase it was cleaned up with a brush with a bit of thinner and that can all be blended for a really dirty grungy look Really nice engine, as you can see. I used a bit of plastic card, just um, bent into a uh, sort of curve, just to help mount the engine. And this actually caused me a little bit of problems because I allowed the engine to dry at a slight upward angle, which caused fit issues with the cowling. And I had to do quite a bit of filling, sanding and rescribing to get it all in. Absolutely my fault, not clear props at all. I just allowed the engine to move um, rather than holding it in place. And uh, yeah, it was a right pain actually. But you live and learn. I think you can
can see just the slight angle there. You can see it's sort of pointing upwards a little bit. All my fault, not clear props at all. The cowling's multi-part. Again, the advantage of the ammo applicator brush, especially when you've pre-painted parts. So what you have to do is um, you can't build up the whole cowling and then slip it over the engine because the diameter actually, it sort of curves backwards on itself and the opening at the back is too small to fit around the engine. So even though I'm sort of gluing bits here, it's a bit of a manipulation thing to, uh, to get it in the right place. So you can see I'm slightly prising it apart there and then I'll close it back down again and then add a little bit more glue. And you can see there's some quite hefty gaps at the back. This is because the engine, because it's tilting up ever so slightly, it's creating that gap at the bottom. It's pushing the cowling away. I suppose I could have, have um, sort of sanded the engine down and things like that, but do you know what I thought? No, nah, let's just uh, let's just attack it with a bit of filler, and actually it disguised quite nicely. You can see on the bottom there, there's a separate part that goes on. Now you can see I'm really struggling here because of the uh, the engines fouling everything, which is a right pain. So uh, here's the bottom part going on, and uh, this is the worst part, fitting part of the kit. Like I say, it's all me. It wasn't clear prop and it was a right fiddle and at the moment I am cursing myself because I know what I've done wrong. I could have snapped the engine off and re-glued it if I'm honest but chose not to. Right little bit of um, ammo ultra glue. This is a it's actually a kind of resin. I thinned it slightly with water because mine's quite old actually. Uh, I do need to get some new fresher stuff. And this is my uh, clear glue of choice at the moment. I'm just going to pop these panels in. I uh, I briefly considered using the extra thin. I thought no, if it just touches on the inside, wicks up the inside of the glass, I'm going to have a sanding and polishing nightmare. So I just stuck with the uh, the sort of clear acrylicy resiny stuff. And what I should have done is painted the inside of the windscreen first. There's quite a lot of clear on the inside, which caused me a bit of a faff. But there we go. That's the end of part three. The airframe is all built. And in the next part, it's on to the fun stuff, which is the painting. So it's a tricky camouflage, actually, all done freehand. I did my usual all dot weathering. And there's a bit of a reveal of the paint masks. It's all painted. And that's what it'll end up looking like. So join me on the next episode. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.